Best-selling economist Greg Mankiw has given us 10 principles to understand economics with. Stand-up economist Joram Bauman, quite possibly a future best-selling author, translates those principles for us in this week's episode. Enjoy! Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only 5 minutes and 20 slides at auto-advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, the best-selling economics textbook in the country was written by a Harvard professor named Greg Mankiw. Uh, when you see the 10 principles in a moment, you'll realize that you pretty much need a PhD in economics to understand them. Uh, fortunately, I have one. So I've taken it upon myself to translate these principles for you. Uh, we're going to begin with the macro principles 8, 9, and 10. Believe it or not, these all have the exact same translation, namely blah, blah, blah. <laughs> As proof, I need only remind you that macroeconomists have successfully predicted nine out of the last five recessions. And as further proof, we can now go up one font size. <laughs> Let's go back to the micro principles. Now, people face trade-offs. The first one, this is easy. Choices are bad, right? This is a simple syllogism. Trade-offs are bad. Anytime you have choices, you have trade-offs. Therefore, choices have to be bad. Uh, if you don't understand that, take a look at the second principle. The cost of something is what you give up to get it. To understand this, imagine someone gives you a Snickers bar that you value at a dollar then since you don't have to give up anything to get it, what you can loosely think of as your economic profit is a dollar. To begin to understand why choices are really bad, imagine someone offers you a choice between the Snickers bar that you value at a dollar and some M&Ms that you value at 70 cents. Now your economic profit is only 30 cents. The worst possible situation, in fact, is being offered a choice between a Snickers bar and an identical Snickers bar. Now, people who are not trained in economics might think that that's no different than being offered one Snickers bar, but that kind of sloppy thinking will never get you a tenure-track position. <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush with you people. Choices are bad, really bad. If you don't understand why choices are bad, you're probably stupid. <laughs> Next principle, rational people think at the margin. Translation, people are stupid. Now, it is immediately obvious that people do not think at the margin. Nobody goes to the grocery store and says, I'm going to buy an orange. I'm going to buy another orange. I'm going to buy another orange. <laughs> people don't think like that. But if people don't think at the margin, and if, as Mankiw says, rational people do think at the margin, we are led to a most unhappy conclusion. People are not rational. People, in other words, are stupid. But before you despair for humanity, take a look at the next principle, people respond to incentives. Now, the dictionary says that incentive is a noun, that means motive. So when Mankiw says that people respond to incentives, what he's saying is that people are motivated by motives. <laughs> you might think this is a bit like saying that tautologies are tautological, right? <laughs> I mean, people would have to be pretty stupid to be unmotivated by motives. But remember principle three. People are stupid, hence the need for principle four to tell us that people aren't that stupid. <laughs> Moving on to every economist's favorite topic, free trade. Principle five, trade can make everyone better off. Translation, trade can make everyone worse off. Now you may wonder how the translation of principle five is the opposite of the principle itself. I have a simple proof that will blow your mind. Compare two statements. One is trade can make everyone better off, and the other is trade will make everyone better off. Now if you had to pick one of these two statements to put in your best-selling economics textbook, it's no contest. The second statement is clearly better. But Mankiw uses the first statement instead. And if you think about why, there's only one possible explanation. The second statement has got to be wrong. In other words, trade can make some people worse off, and from there it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to trade can make everybody worse off. Now, I figured some of you would have some questions about this, so I went back and I added a footnote with some details. Eat your heart out. 
The example in the footnote is actually a real example. If you go to my website, standupeconomist.com, you can see a follow-up video about climate change that goes into the details. But what I want to do now is point out that the last two principles follow immediately from principle five in its translation. If trade and markets can make everyone better off, then what the heck do we need government for? Governments are stupid. But if trade can make everyone worse off, we better have a government around to stop people from trading. So governments aren't that stupid. So there are the 10 principles of economics translated. And there's my website, standupeconomist.com. I want to encourage you to go on my website, standupeconomist.com, and sign up for my email list. And I also, on my website, you can uh, pre-order a copy of my forthcoming book, The Cartoon Introduction to Economics, <laughs> co-authored and illustrated by the fabulous Grady Klein. It is coming out early next year, and you can pre-order it at standupeconomist.com. Thank you so much. Have a good night.